लाइव हो गए So shall we start and let the participants join as they come? If you like, yes. Uh, I'll minimize this or go to small view for this. So it just got a little. Sir. Uh, so uh, participants, we have uh, uh, Professor Gordon uh, Hunter with us today, and I invite uh, Professor Vishal Adak of uh, Mathematics Department to introduce sir, and then sir will continue the session. Uh, Professor Vishal, please. Yes. Hello, Professor Gordon, and welcome good one and all. Good, well, good morning for me. Good morning. Good afternoon for you. Yeah. Good, good afternoon. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, just, let me just introduce Dr. Gordon here to every participant, every members who have joined this uh, seminar here. Uh, Dr. Gordon is a senior lecturer in mathematics and computing at Kingston University. Uh, he's been working uh, there since 2003. Uh, he's a graduate of Cam University of Cambridge, where he did his BA in mathematics, and University College London, where he did his master's MSc in uh, electronic electronic engineering, and wherein he also completed his PhD in computer speech technology. Uh, his previous uh, he's also worked at Portsmouth University, Saint Mary's University, and University of Westminster. uh his various research applications are in different fields such as you know medicine you have environmental science you have finance and many such applications to his works and if i'm not wrong he's also done his mathematical modeling and statistical modeling to sports which includes cricket if i'm not wrong sir is it your favorite sport that is indeed yes and i follow um interested in it a lot yes cricket and uh I was uh, very intrigued by the World Cup last year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so fine. I let you take the show now. Uh, you may proceed with the lecture. Okay, so my. Uh, okay, so hopefully you can see my my large slide now. Yes, sir. Yes. And I'll just put the the little video in the corner. Yeah. And just close that. Uh, so this is a um, work that I've been uh, involved with for a number of years now, and it's work done with a number of other people, including my colleagues Olga Duran. And uh, Rosa Buskets and Jean Christophe Nabel. Um, Rosa Buskets is actually an environmental scientist, so uh, she's got the ob obvious in interest in this. It's <coughs> um, trying to do smart monitoring and of uh, honeybee behaviour and related environmental signals, uh, with a view to promoting uh, health and well-being of honeybees for uh, maintaining um, both the natural environment and uh, Preserving the um, preserving well, what's happened here? Uh, preserving um, bee welfare for things like pollination of crops. Oh, hang on! I seem to be having trouble moving the slide. Oh, there you go. So, just a little overview: <laughs> uh, why are honey bees important, and at least in uh, Europe and North America, why are they so much in decline? And what can we do about the problem? Then <clears throat> a couple of um, a couple of um, parts to to the research. Uh, first of all, um, acoustic monitoring and analysis of honeybee hives to try and detect whether they're lacking a healthy queen. Secondly, uh, design and deployment and initial analysis of um, our, our own system for comprehensive non-invasive monitoring. And subsequent analysis of uh, signals from beehives, and uh, phase three, some recent results and recent work, and I'll conclude and propose what work we hope to do in the future. So, just a little bit about the honeybee. Um, the honeybee, or the Latin name Apis mellifera, literally honey-bearing bee, honey-carrying bee, um, is a very important, very important, not just uh, for honey production. But it's vital to agriculture because um, honeybees pollinate a large proportion of crops, particularly fruit crops and nuts and so on. 
um, including apples, blueberries, almonds, but many more as well. Uh, here we see um, of one subspecies of honeybee, these are all from the same um, subspecies. Uh, here we have, the, in the center, we have the queen bee. <clears throat> Typically the queen is the only reproductive female in the in a beehive or bee colony. Um, there will be a significant number of drones, which are male honeybees. Um, it's questionable how much work they actually do in a hive, but <clears throat> they're vital for genetic diversity. And then most of the, by far and away, the majority of bees in a hive are worker honeybees. So you notice are smaller than either of the other two. Um, and these, as they, their name suggests, do all the work. They're vital to the colony. They do everything from looking after the, the brood, the young, <clears throat> maintaining the hive, and as they get older, foraging for pollen and nectar, which they make into, um, subsequently make into honey. Now there's been, um, in Europe and North America, there's been a major decline in honeybee numbers in the last 20 years or so. There's various proposed reasons for this. One of parasites such as the um, varroa mites that, although varroa mites don't tend to kill bees, they weaken them. Various sorts of pesticides, particularly neonicotinoids, that um, although they're designed to kill pest insects, they also seem to kill bees. And various other things, including mobile phone signals. So um, here's a little bit of illustration about why honeybees are so important in agriculture. Um, if we look here on the, oops, sorry. If we look here on the left, this is data from the USA. It's a little bit old now, but it's still valid. Um, these are various cash crop or um, agricultural crops. And the uh, bar indicates the proportion of that crop that are pollinated by, first of all, by honeybees in the dark thing, in the dark shading, the lighter shading are other insects. The rest of it is other ways. So soya beans are not predominantly um, pollinated by insects, whereas almost all almonds and a very high proportion of apples and blueberries are pollinated by bees. <clears throat> Here we have, um, on the right, we have the corresponding data for uh, various British uh, UK um, agricultural crops. And um, here are the values in millions of pounds. So I think roughly speaking, one pound is 200 rupees. Uh, sorry, I think 100 Indian rupees, roughly speaking. <clears throat> so um, the, you have to multiply this by 100 to get, these are millions of pounds. Have to multiply these by 100 um, to get an estimate of the pollination value. But it's estimated pollination value for, of honeybees for uh, cash crops in the UK uh, in whatever year that was, 2010, I think that was, was 603 million pounds. Um, I'm not very good at converting that to lakhs and crores, but uh, I think a crore is, a lakh is 100,000 and a crore is 10 million, if I believe. So that's uh, that would be 60.3 crore pounds, I guess or multiply by 100 to get rupees. <clears throat> okay, so why has there been this serious decline in honeybee numbers? Well, here's a quotation from uh, 2015 uh, about the USA. Uh, they reckon that uh, depopulation is growing every year. And they reckon that mon in monetary terms, uh, you're talking about of the order of $30 billion in terms of the effective loss to to um, the agricultural industry in the USA. And this has been reported certainly across Europe and North America and uh, to some extent in other countries as well. Uh, here's an example of the, both the um, amount of, the quantity of uh, almond growing in uh, um, farmland in California. The red line is showing how the agricultural area for almonds has grown over the years. Oops, sorry back one. I'm trying to go back a slide. Oh, I, I dare say you can just uh, gather from that, but um, I seem to be having trouble going back. Um, so here's a, uh, some of the known threats to honeybees. Here is a varroa mite. It's, it's a spider-like, it's an arachnid type creature and here you see it on 2b larvae and pupae this one is is closer to becoming an animal. 